Hi guys, this is Karthik Arora. In this video, I'll be discussing the second problem for the series, and the problem is coin combinations. So you can pause the video and uh, read the problem statement on your own. Then I'll be explaining it in my words. So you are given with n coins. Each coin has some value c1, c2, c3, and so on till cn. You are given with these n coins. You would like to make a sum x, right? So for this example, you are given with three coins, and the values of those coin coins are two, three, and five. You would like to make a total sum nine using these coins only, and you have infinite supply of each of these coins. So you have infinite number of coins with the value two. Same way for three and five. You would like to find the number of ways in which you could uh, use your coins and make nine. So let's. Uh, start this. I'll give you the example, and moreover, we are interested only in the ordered ways. So let's say if one way is that two plus two plus I guess four plus five. So this is one way of making a total sum nine, right? So you will not consider these two different ways. You will consider only one of these ways. So you will just consider this one way, and not these two ways as different. Okay. So these these are basically the same ways. You would like to cal uh, calculate the valid number of ordered ways in which you can make the sum x using your coins. So let's consider this example. You want to make the total sum nine. To make the sum nine, you may choose a coin of five or you may not. There are just two possibilities. So I either I do not choose the coin with value five or I do choose it. If I do not choose the value five, then I still want to make the sum equal to nine. However, if I do choose the value five, then I want to make the sum four. Okay. And let's say that I did not choose five at first. This means that I'm going to uh, exclude five forever. Now, in this particular case, I will never be taking five again because if five existed in the in one of my ways, then I would have went here. Okay, I would have taken it. So if if I have rejected it once, I have rejected it forever. Now I will think about the coin three here. I will either exclude it, uh, not take it, or I will take it. If I do not take it, I still want to make the sum nine. But if I take it, then I want to make the sum nine minus three six, and so on. This will keep on going, right? Here I have I have rejected five and three. I have only one coin left. That is two. Either I take it or I leave it. So I, if I leave it, I still want the sum nine. If I take it, I will want the sum seven. In this particular case here, here I still have the option of taking coin number three. Either I take it or I do not take it. If I do not take it, I want the sum six minus three. That is three. And oh, sorry, this was the option when I did not take it. Right, zero. So I still want to make the sum six. If I take it, then I want to make the sum three. Similarly, for this node, you still have the option of taking coin five, but uh, you cannot because the sum you want is smaller than five, right? So you cannot take five. The only option you are left with is don't take five, and then you'll be left with these two coins. And you can continue this recursive procedure. The number of leaf nodes th that uh, Have a value zero is going to be your number of valid ways. Okay, so for example, I'll just complete one of the paths so that it's more clear. So I take five. If I take five, then I want to make a sum four. I do not take five now. I still want a sum four. I do not take three. I want a sum four. If I take three, then I want a sum one. Here I will take two. I will take two again, and I will reach zero. So this is one of the valid ways. In this way, I took five here, then I took a two, and I took another two. So it was two plus two plus five. If you try to complete this recursion tree, you will get that there are three valid ways in which you could make the sum nine. So with this intuition, I will be moving towards the solution. So I have these n coins, c1, c2, so on till cn, right? These are the values of these n coins, and I want to make the sum x. So 
So I will represent my dp state or state as the following. Initially, I want to make the sum x and I have n coins. Okay, so this would mean I would want to find the number of ways in which I could make the sum x given these n coins. Let me just write, write it this way. Given the given n coins, make the sum x. So now I will think whether in the valid ways, right, in all the ways that give me a sum x, in some of the ways my nth coin is taken and in some other ways my nth coin is not taken. Right, there are just two possibility for the nth coin. In one of the cases, in some of the cases it will be taken and in some it will not be. So let's say we consider the case in, the, in which the nth coin does not uh, is not included. So if the nth coin is not included, I'm left with the first n minus one coins and I still want to find the number of ways in which the first n minus one coins can give me a sum equal to x. Whereas in the other case, when I do include the nth coin, this would mean that I still have all the n coins because given I had infinite supply of the nth coin, right? So I may choose to take it again. So let's say, okay, I still have all the n coins, but now the sum that I want to make is x minus cn. Why is that so? Because I included the nth coin. So my sum already has a value cn. So I just want to make the remaining sum. Okay. Initially I wanted to make x. I've already made cn sum, uh, cn value. I've already taken this much value. So I want x minus cn to make now, right? So for uh, now, I would like to find the number of ways in which I could make the sum x using n minus one coins and all those ways <clears throat> can be included in the number of valid overall valid ways, right? The number of valid ways to make x using n minus one coins can be included in the number of valid ways to make x using n coins when I do not include the nth coin. Same way, the number of ways in which you can make the sum x minus cn using n coins can be included in the number of ways to make the sum x using n coins in which I include the nth coin at least once, right? So I will again take a decision about the n minus one nth coin here. Include, exclude it, include it, just two options. If I exclude it, I have n minus two coins, I still want the sum x. If I include it, I have n minus one coins still because I may choose to take the n minus one coin again and the sum I want is x minus cn minus one, right? Similarly, I will go on exploring this table. So with this table, I would like you to pause the video and think of a dp state, define it and try to build a recurrence. So I'll just build the recurrence now. First of all, let me define dp of i comma x. So this is the number of valid ways in which you can make the sum x using the coins c1 to ci. Valid ways to make x using coins c1, c2, ci. Right. This is dp of x. So if we were able to calculate dpix for all the valid values, what is going to be my final answer? I want to calculate the number of valid ways to make the sum capital X using the coins C1, C2, so on till Cn. So my final answer by definition is going to be n comma X, right? Now let's think of the recurrence. So as we discussed, there are just two possible uh, ways. And one of the ways is that I take the ith coin and the other way is that I do not take the ith coin. These two ways will lead to disjoint possibilities and these disjoint possibilities will add up to give dpix. First way is that you exclude the ith coin. So you are left with the coin c1 to ci minus one and you still want to make the sum x. The other way is that you take the ith coin and you're still left with ith coin because you may choose to take the ith coin again but you want to make the sum x minus ci. So this is your recurrence and that is it. The time complexity and space complexity for this are going to be n times x. I will, I will be coding up the solution now. Uh, here a few things to note. If the value of the ith coin is greater than the sum you want to make, you cannot really take it. So you will have to consider that. If you are left with only one coin to consider, that is if you're, if you're only having C1, then you cannot uh, 
choose not to take it. You will have to take it no matter what. Moreover, another base case could be that what is DP of zero comma any any number of coins? Let's say X number of coins. Sorry, opposite. You have some I number of coins and you want to make the sum X. So to make the sum X uh, sum zero, you have one valid way in which you take no coin at all. You will lead. Uh, you will have the sum zero in your hand. So this is it. A, a recurrence, a base case, a definition for the answer. And now we can move to the coding part. Also guys, if you haven't subscribed till now, uh, be sure to subscribe. I will be adding a lot of more content. So I'll define integer dp n x plus one maybe. I also need to input the coins. So I've taken the input here. <coughs> I've declared my dp array. My final answer is going to be stored at dp of n. Uh, let me just make this one based. So my final answer is going to be dp of nx. Now let's build my dp array using the recurrence we had. So I'm uh, considering the first i coins. So I will only use, be using the first i coins to make the sum uh, to make the sum s or sum. The sum could be anywhere from zero till I guess x. Now we need to build our recurrences. We discussed the base case. What if sum is equals to zero? Then there is one way, right? You can have dp of i comma sum equal to uh, one way that you don't choose any coin at all. The other case was that if the sum is not zero, it's not a base case. Then you saw that there were two possibilities. So you have this option number one and you have another option two. In option one, you we choose to take the ith coin. In option two, uh, we choose to not take it. So if I do take the ith coin, then I will be still left with i coins, but I want to make the sum sum minus the value of the ith coin. In the second option, if I do not take the ith coin, I will be left with i minus one coins, and the sum I want to make is still sum. These two possibilities will add up together to give me dp of i comma sum. This will be option one plus option two. And I will print my answer modulo 10 to the power 9 plus 7 because the ways will be very uh, ways will be very large, right? And this should work except for a few base cases to consider. I cannot take the ith coin if my sum is if my value of the coin is greater than the sum. So if vi is greater than the sum you want to make, you cannot include it. So you just say that there are no ways in which you will be including this coin. So zero ways. In this particular case, you will not be excluding the coin. You cannot really choose to exclude a coin if you have only one coin in hand. So if i equals to zero, you cannot choose to exclude the coin. So that possibility does not exist. So at the end, I must be having my answer as dpnx. Let me just try this on a sample case. So it's saying option uh, one. Okay. So it says three, nine, two, three, five, and we're getting the correct answer. I'll try to submit. So we're getting the correct answer guys. I hope this video was helpful to you. And if you liked it, do press the like button and also subscribe. A like and a subscribe will surely get me more motivated to bring out more quality content. Thanks for watching.